everybody, and welcome back to Pagan's Witchy Corner. My name is Pagan. I hope you all have had a wonderful start to your fall season. Yes, it was the start of fall this week, which was so awesome. It was also Mabin this week, so if you celebrated Mabin celebration, uh, let me know what you guys did. I would love to hear about it. We had such a wonderful day with our family. I made a mushroom bourguignon and an apple crisp for our Mabin celebration dinner. And then afterwards, the Witchy Wednesday group got together and we did a cute little spell for Mabin together. And it was a lot of fun. So if you have not joined our Witchy Wednesday group, you should definitely do, do that. You can join over in Gilded at gilded.gg forward slash RPN. They are so much fun. And every week I'm just still blown away by how amazing the group is, how much fun they are to learn from and grow with. And we play with all sorts of divination stuff. And now we're kind of starting to branch out a little bit into some spell work and doing some other cool stuff. Uh, in the coming weeks, we're going to be doing a little prosperity spell together. We're also going to be doing some... Uh, fire cider making together. So if that's something that you're interested in, get over in Gilded and come join us. It's such a good time. And if you haven't already joined us for the seances, those are on Saturday. You can join us over on Twitch or you can find all of the information about them in Gilded. Also, you can find the information over on the revelatornetwork.com site. So come join us for all of that. It's always a good time. So we are wrapping up our divination series. This series is going to be something that I'll probably add more episodes to as I learn more about divination because there's a lot of other forms of divination I'm exploring, but I don't feel comfortable talking about them yet on the show because I don't know enough about them. And this one is also probably going to be a little bit of a shorter episode because I'm still learning about this, but I feel... Like, I'm comfortable enough to tell you about some of my practices with Agram and runes. So, runes are something that I have been dabbling with for about three years. I bought my set about three years ago, and for about six months it sat on a shelf. I didn't really do anything. And from there, I just woke up one day and decided that I was going to get the runes down, get the book out. And pull some runes. And I played with them for a good while. And I, I did a, a daily rune reading for quite a while. And then I took a break from it. And now it has really come into my forefront. But now it's like, now is the time for you to learn this. And I've been learning them and working with them and growing with them for probably about six months now. And I don't know what it was that made me wake up one day and go, hey, today is the day that you need to learn this. I don't know if it was something with a connection to my deities because I just started working with Odin. Um, and, you know, as you all know, Loki is my patron. Thor is one of my patrons. So I don't know if it was something to do with that or what. But now the runes and I are getting very comfortable with each other. Runes are something that are very fun to work with, at least for me, because they they don't sugarcoat. <laughs> when you do a reading, they don't sugarcoat. The reader can sugarcoat the, what they are saying if they the reader wants to. But ultimately, runes will tell you what you need to know right then and there. And that's very true because a lot of the times, you know, thinking about where the runes came from, you know, in the Germanic areas of the world, that's one of those things they didn't really want to take the time to have monkey business, essentially. They wanted to know what they needed to know and get to what they needed to do. They weren't really ones to just sit around and say, hey, it's, you know, we're going to go ahead and give you a loosey goosey reading. I've never had a loosey goosey reading with runes. Tarot, yes. Uh, Oracle, definitely. But runes, no. They are straight to the point. They will tell you exactly what you need to know, exactly what's going on, and they will basically tell you get your shit together, which is awesome. <laughs> it sometimes is what we really need is just somebody to say get your shit together, and the runes often have done that for me. The fun thing about runes is runes are connected to the gods. They are connected to animals and harvest 
and all sorts of really wonderful things. And they have such a great story with each rune, but they also have such a great message with each rune. And the fun thing about runes too is unlike tarot, um, where every tarot card can be reversed, not every rune can be reversed. You can read some runes reversed, but most of the runes you can't. They are all very, uh, some of them, the symbols just can't be turned upside down because they're the same either direction. So there is no reversed reading. So what you get is what you get. And they are definitely a very different form of divination. And the reason I say different is because they're versatile. So you can draw runes as a form of protection or to aid you in your magic. They can be a form of a language. They can be all sorts of different things because each rune is also a letter. So that's super cool. So you can also create a language out of these. You just have to learn what they mean. The fun thing about them too is when I say that they're versatile, I have a rune board. And it's got the little grooves for you to set your runes in when you draw them out. And you can draw, I think, up to seven on the board. I think there, there's a place for seven. Uh, might be seven or ten, but I'm pretty sure it's seven um, without going and getting my rune board. But the cool thing about my rune board is, too, around the edge of my board, because my board's a circle, all the runes are carved. So when I say that they're versatile, I can take my pendulum and I can have a rune reading with pointing to one of those runes and then I just ask yes or no if that's the rune as I'm pointing to the rune and it's really fun to do it differently that way you still get your rune reading but it's in a different format and I'm not saying that you have to go out and buy an ex a expensive rune board though mine was not expensive I think mine was like 20 bucks maybe I don't know I'd have to look I bought it off of Etsy it's absolutely stunning hand carved Anyway, I digress. But uh, you can also create a circle of runes on a piece of paper and do the same thing with pendulum. So if you don't have a set of runes, do that. Still get a rune reading. The fun thing about that is it's combining two forms of divination. So you have your pendulum work, which is, you know, very yes and no kind of divination, which you still end up doing with this because you have to ask the pendulum if that's the rune that it was pointing to. And then uh, you also get this wonderful way of connecting with your runes in a different matter because it's not, you see them all in front of you and you can say, oh, hey, you know, this is what I would think that this is going to point to. And then your pendulum points to a totally different one. And it's like, no, that's not the rune for you. This is the rune for you or whoever you're reading for. It's a lot of fun to do that. And it's different. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is I do that a lot of times on Twitter for uh, those in my Twitter feed. So if you respond, you get a rune reading through the rune board. Uh, you could do the same thing with Ogham. I've never done it with Ogham. I don't have like an Ogham board like that, but you could probably do the same thing. Just draw your symbols out in a circle on a piece of paper for your Ogham and do that as well. So that would be really fun. I, I might have to try that. I've never done that. That would be cool. <laughs> uh, the cool thing about the story of the runes, the story of the runes is actually one of my favorites. And Odin was gifted the runes um, and the magic and the spells of the runes by sacrificing himself by hanging from Yggdrasil, um, which is the world tree. He hung himself, I believe it's for nine days. Uh, and ended up getting the knowledge of the runes, which he then passed on to humanity. So it was something that was very interesting and really a cool story. You can find it in the Poetic Eddas. So I believe it's the sayings of the high ones. So go check out that story. It's really wonderful. But runes have such a wonderful connection to them and i don't know if it's because i work with norse deities or what but i i love working with my runes i always feel such a very deep connection to working with them and i'm starting to feel that way a little bit about my Ogham. Ogham was one of those things that i originally saw it on an episode of haunt me one of the uh, investigators that was on haunt me had a set of Ogham staves uh, sorry, words are hard, and <laughs> set of Ogram staves. And she used them to connect with 
the spirits of the place that they were in. And it was something that was totally different that I had never seen and I had never heard of. And immediately after I watched this episode, I was like, I need to know what this is. And I went and Googled it and learned about it. And I was like, I would love to have a set. I would love to. And I researched a couple of sets and some of the sets that I was looking at were really, really expensive because each set is always hand carved. There is no, I don't believe there's any mass manufacturer of Ogham staves out there like there are for tarot and runes. Uh, you, a lot of times you will find your Ogham staves will either be a singular set of wood like a singular type of wood, like oak or um, ash or something else. I think mine are made out of uh, oak, if I remember correctly. And the the rest of them, when you go and look at your sets, you can also find sets that are made out of a branch of each type of tree or bush. So with Ogham, Ogham is based off of trees and bushes. So you have like birch, uh, ash, oak, rowan, etc, etc, etc. And each one has a specific meaning. And those meanings are also very much similar to runes. They are straightforward to the point. Now, the difference that I have found with Ogham is Ogham is one of those things where Ogham doesn't have a lengthy meaning to it. It's usually just a few short words or a sentence or two of what it means. Now, like I said, Agam is very new to me. I'm still researching. I'm still learning it. And I've only been working with my set for about three months now. And it's kind of one of those things. I don't know if you guys remember from the Tara episode where I have a deck that the, the book is essentially worthless, but the cards themselves are not. And that's the Dark Mirror Oracle deck. That deck kind of forces you to read off your intuition because the book doesn't give you anything. It's like all riddles and, you know, like, oh, hey, we should do this. And what about this? And it talks about more of the symbolism behind the card, but not actually what the card means, which is totally fine. I mean, the, that's the way maybe the author designed it. But for me, that deck is what I call an intuition reading deck. And Ogham is that way. It is an intuition based thing. Yes, they have meanings and you take those meanings. And in order for you to get something personalized out of that, you ultimately have to trust what your intuition is saying. And that's where it's very different from something like uh, tarot or even runes where runes have a very lengthy message. Now, those messages, yes, you can learn each of them and you can still learn what your intuition is saying based off of those messages. But Algam doesn't give you that learning curve. It does not say, hey, here's the message that you can fall back on if you don't understand it. There isn't really much there. There's very little and you really have to trust what your intuition is telling you from the universe or God, your spirit, your guides, whatever is speaking to you for whoever you're reading for, even if it's for yourself. You have to trust that. So Ogham is one of those things that's a little tougher for me to learn, but it is also very much a fun thing. Now, I am also experimenting with some other forms of divination, which I've only recently started with, but we're not going to get really deep into them. But I will tell you what I'm experimenting with, and that is seashell divination and stone divination. Those ones are very interesting. They're similar to kind of throwing bones um, or throwing trinkets, whichever you want to call it. And you basically get these stones and or shells and you gently toss them onto your uh, mat or whatever you have that is showing you your quadrants or whatever that you end up reading with. And it takes a lot because I have to really take the time. The seashell one's taking the most time because I actually don't know what types of shells these are because they were originally my mother-in-law's. And now that she has passed, uh, I have taken that set on and I'm using it for divination. Now, the fun thing about this divination set for me is it's very interesting in the regards with I have to take the time to draw them, to learn them, and then kind of figure out what they are because I have no idea what types of shells these are because I didn't find them myself and I don't know enough about them. 
but they are really fun to learn about and to grow with. And then I can take those and assign meanings to them in order for me to actually read divination with them. Now, stone divination is a little different. A lot of the stones you can find in Kiki Drombrowski's book, A Curious Future, and they have associated meanings. You can then devise your own set. You can pick and choose which stones you would like and have them there accordingly. And then the cool thing about reading those is you just reach your hand and grab a handful of stones and toss them down and see what is what and what the universe is trying to tell you through those stones. It's a lot of fun and it's very different. And that's the cool thing about divination. Divination doesn't have to just be tarot cards or runes. It can be pretty much anything. It can be music. It can be food. It can be looking at leaves that and the way that they fall into water. They can be, I, I've seen divination through candle wax and water, which is very interesting. That one I'm kind of interested in as well, but I don't know enough about it. And there's automatic writing, automatic drawing, automatic painting, so many other forms of donation that you can actually reach out and get in touch with your spirits that way. So this is going to conclude our divination series. And the reason that I'm including it here, as I said at the beginning of the episode, is there's not a lot that I'm really versed in. And I'm going to be exploring that. And I hope that you will also, in your own time, go and explore that. If you're looking for a place to start, A Curious Future by Kiki Dombrowski is a great place to start. If you're new to tarot or new to runes and you're trying to figure out how to understand that and want to know more about that, Lisa Chamberlain's books, A Beginner's Guide to Tarot and Beginning, Beginner's Guide to Runes are wonderful places to start as well. There's so many other resources out there as well that you can go and find and I encourage you to do that. And then come tell me about what is interesting to you and what you are playing with, what you're exploring. Come to Witchy Wednesdays, bring your divination kits, and we will explore them together. It is a great time and a good time, and I hope that you will join us. So thank you all so much for joining me. If you are a subscriber to the show, there's a couple of ways that you can subscribe to be a subscriber to the show. You can go over to anchor.fm forward slash Pagan Switchy Corner and subscribe there. There is a link in the below in the show notes. And you can also go from there if you want to subscribe there. I believe it is a $5 charge and you also help get to support the show. You will get bonus episodes and all sorts of other goodies. Now, if that's not your cup of tea and you want more and more goodies for that, head over to buy me a coffee forward slash Pagan, I believe. And again, link will be in the show notes. You can go there and you can become a subscriber there and get sort all sorts of other cool goodies outside of this. But if you want the bonus episodes, you got to subscribe on Anchor. Buy Me A Coffee has other cool subscription stuff. So check out both of those. Thank you all for those of you who already are supporting the show. You guys are absolutely amazing. I love each and every one of you guys are awesome. And thank you for continuing to help the show grow. And I look forward to talking to you all next week. Alrighty. Bye, everybody.